Hi, I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector Podcast. And I have joining me, I got a new guest and a new company for us to follow. I have Philippe Cloutier, who is the president and CEO of Cartier Resources. Welcome to the show, Philippe. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity, Michael. Yeah, I'm uh, happy we could finally get you on. You and I have known each other for probably years longer than either one of us wants to to mention. Uh, we've done some articles on uh, Cartier in the past in in the Prospector News, uh, but it's the first time I've had just been able to get you onto a podcast. But uh, before we get too far into it, let's give everybody a uh, overview of what Cartier is for those that uh, may not be familiar with the company. All right. For starters, uh, my name is Philip Cloutier. I am the founder of the company. I am the president, CEO, and I'm also a director. Uh, launched this company in uh, mid-2007. So we've been around for um, just under 20 years. We focus on gold and exploration in the Quebec portion of the Abitibi Greenstone Belt. Um, I'm a geologist by trade. Uh, I've, I've bounced around quite a bit. I've worked for senior companies and, and junior companies uh, alike. And and then, like I said, you know, in 2006, we decided to bootstrap and launch this company. Now, we've been quite lucky. It's gone from prospect generator model to uh, this very advanced uh, exploration program that we're running on a past producing, uh, in and around a past producing gold mine. Uh, for those of you who are not cognizant of Cartse, uh, Agnico Eagle owns 27.2% of the shares. Uh, European shareholders just under 15%. Uh, the rest is high net worth and long-term Quebec shareholders for um, uh, another 30-ish percent. So uh, we have $12 million in the bank. We launched in August of 2025 a 100,000-meter diamond drill program. There's uh, going to be focusing on the top 300 meters. So we're going to be drilling 600 diamond drill holes over a 15 kilometer stretch of the Larder Lake Cadillac Fault. Uh, we have a preliminary resource estimate that we ran in 2023 using a price of gold of uh, $1,750 USD. And we have uh, four resource estimates published. Uh, we're updating both of those uh, uh, both of those studies, and that's about it. I mean, we're going to we've set ourselves up for very dynamic, uh, frequent, and robust news flow for the next eighteen months, and uh, I'm hoping to get across the value proposition and uh, or the investment opportunity uh, to your audience, Michael, in the next uh, ten minutes or so of, of discussion. Yeah, it's. Uh... I, I always kind of giggle to myself when I hear these older uh, PEAs and preliminary, you know, there's like uh, gold price at 1600 gold price at 1750 gold price at 2000 when, you know, gold's been uh, soaring, it's up around 4000 And when the economics were good back then, they're like extremely good now, uh, but you have to go with what you have. But um, geographically, you, know, um, you talk about this being on the, the larger trend. Uh, explain to people where in Quebec that is, uh, using some uh, communities and landmarks around there. And you also mentioned that uh, this is surrounding a former gold mine. So let's uh, talk a little bit more about that. Well, you're you're absolutely right in, in reminding me of saying that because usually us geos we we tend to think uh, everybody knows about the Lard Lake Cadillac Fault and the Quebec uh, and Ontario Abitibi Greenstone Belt. It is a premier uh, tier one, uh, world class uh, gold and base metal producing district in the world, uh, the Abitibi. Now the Lard Lake Cadillac Fault is the southernmost fault. Uh, of this uh, extensive greenstone belt that uh, straddles Quebec and Ontario. The fault itself runs over 500 kilometers and the eastern portion of it, about 150 kilometers, um, sits uh, here in southern Quebec between the cities of uh, Rwanda and Val d'Or. Now, the, the the significance of that is it, it's, it's been around and there's gold discoveries uh, dating back to 1920. Uh, since we're in 2026 pretty soon, and that's over 100 years of discovery and production, uh, hundreds of mines, hundreds of millions of ounces of gold, 
Uh, and it's actually the birthplace of uh, senior gold producers such as uh, Agnico, Varick, um, and, 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 and Naranda as well. And, and uh, now it's attracted uh, in the last five or 10 years uh, other gold producers such as El Dorado and, and Goldfields. So it is, it is a very attractive and prospective area. And uh, we, uh, you know, what makes a senior mining company is the fact that they end up owning mining camps. And a mining camp is a cluster of several mines. And, and that's, that's part of our value proposition. And that's why we've lined up 100,000 meters of diamond drilling over this extensive property package that we have directly on the Cadillac Fault east of Valdor, a 30 minute drive east of Valdor. Um, and we believe and, 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 and our, our program is basically designed around the fact that we believe there's a, 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 the next mining camp along that fault is covered by the ground that we own 100%. And so, there's uh, it's it's got four styles of gold mineralization. It has a past producing mine uh, uh, that produced in the 60s, in the 80s, in the in the late 90s. The mine shut down in 1997, precisely during the BX um, gold scandal, and uh, and and it, it didn't shut down for lack of ore, as I hope to get across to you. It shut down because the price of gold back then was $275 US. Now, uh, you alluded to the fact that, uh, yeah, it makes it, got, you kind of chuckle when you say people are using, uh, they did PEAs or, or feasibilities at a much lower gold price. And I would like to point out, well, there's a lot of gold projects that are economic at these very high levels of gold. But if if you published a, 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 an economic assessment or a feasibility when the price of gold was low and it was and your project was economic, well, it's even more economic by now. And uh, what we've decided to do is uh, hold off on on updating that uh, the resource estimate and and the PEA for for another few weeks or a month or so because we we wanted to launch this aggressive diamond drill program. Uh, parallel to that, we wanted to launch metallurgical studies. Parallel to that, we wanted to launch the environmental baseline studies, uh, and 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 also run an evaluation of the residual gold content in the um, the Chimo mine tailings. Um, since it is a past producing mine, uh, and uh, we do think that the recoveries in the late 90s were not as, you know, as, uh, as performant as they are today in modern times, we do believe that there's residual gold in that tailings. So there's a lot of irons in the fire there's uh, drill results forthcoming. There's results from the metallurgical stuff coming. There's results coming from the environmental baseline study and the and the tailings impoundment site study. And then obviously, as as you may suspect, we will be updating the resource estimates and the the, the economic assessments with uh, the the more modern or recent uh, gold prices and 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 so on and so forth. Yeah, uh, it's. You know, you're doing all the right things that's going to, in, you know, increase the resource, increase the economics of it. Uh, as I say, when I when I giggle at those lower prices, you're absolutely right. It, the giggle is, yeah, it was economic then. It's it's scary economic now when you uh, when you factor in the higher you know, the higher commodity prices that are available. Now, you mentioned that there was a, a tailings from the old mine that was there, and the mine had operated as, as far back as the 1960s. Did the tailings go that far back? Is there a reason to believe the deeper you go into the tailings, the higher the concentrated gold there might be? Because they were definitely not as good as modern day uh, techniques. Well, it, 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 that's a good point. And in fact, the, the, the issue here is, well, it's not a real issue. The, the bonus here is that the tailings uh, were essentially generated from the last uh, the last period of production at the mine in the 1990s. Because in the 60s and the 80s, uh, the ore, which was mostly gold associated to sulfide bearing rocks, were sent off-site to neighboring mills. Uh, and there was no mill on site at Chimo, so they were toll milling back then. And the last, um, the last stint of mining, well, that they were only doing the gravity circuit, and uh, and we know the recoveries then were not good because 
they had just recently brought a mill onto the site and they had not yet calibrated it for the the best recovery. So even if there's only, I don't know, five to 10,000 ounces, we're not even talking in the 100,000 uh, ounce range, well, there's there's a there's a pretty little uh, stash to be to be gained. Now, how much gold is there in that? How much gold dust is there in that tailings? Is it recoverable? And does it make economic sense to to use it to draw down or or or, or bring down the capex required to launch a, a, a fourth version of mining in in the Chimo or the Cadillac uh, project area? Okay, so you've got a hundred thousand meter program that's underway. Yep. Uh, you've uh, you've had some results coming back. Um, so I got I got two questions. Uh, first, were any of the drill holes dropped into that tailings? And then secondly, um, let's talk about the results that you've had so far and how much of that drill program those results represent. All right. So. There are zero holes that were done into the tailings right now. The tailings, what we call the Chimo Tailings Project, is entirely run by independent consultants that are going to go onto the tailings uh, impoundment site and uh, drill very short sonic holes um, to cover the entire tailings to, to, to come up with a resource estimate. you got to understand that that tailings site is 600 meters long by about 300 meters wide and is about three to five meters thick. So it 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 it, it only deals with you know uh, uh, pulverized um, gold rich um, uh, dust from previous mining. So that has not been initiated that yet. We're running that, and that is entirely going to be run by a group of um, expert um, uh, uh, engineers that uh, we mandated I, I think about a month ago. The second part of your question was uh, the, the recent drilling. Well, the recent drilling uh, is three specific press releases stemming from Dryman drilling that was initiated in August uh, just a month or two months ago. Uh, we're getting very rapid or, or, or quick returns from the lab. So we're, we're anticipating press releases every second or third week. And so far, we've held our promise uh, of a press release per two weeks. Uh, all of the holes will only be from zero to 300 meter depth over a 15 kilometer strike length. So it's about a one hole and a half per day that the drill rigs are producing. There are two drill rigs out in operation. Now, the, the, the interesting results that you're talking about are from what we call the contact zone. And the contact zone straddles, uh, straddles a fault um, that um, where there was initial discovery did by Chalice Gold Mines. They had only one hole in it. Uh, O3 mining came in, did three holes around that, and well, they you know they they showed that that thing was going to be extensive. Now we returned uh, in 2024 and now in 2025, and we're defining a a shallow open pitable resource there uh, from zero to 300. So far, the gold is the the zone is known over a 400 meter strike length, down to a depth of 300 meters. And they are, they are three separate high-grade gold veins over a width of about 50 meters. Uh, and we're, re we're returning grades uh, in the order of 30 to 40 grams per ton over metric or one to two or three meter wide. And th that's hosted within um, uh, lower grade material, of maybe two to three uh, grams per ton over, you know, 20 meter widths. Um, there are still some more drill results forthcoming from that area before the drill is moved on to a, another site. And, and, and I hope that answers both your questions. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it sounds really encouraging that that's going to be open pitable. And it's, it's more or less virgin territory for your company, not reflected in the, in the previous mineral estimates. So it's, uh, yeah. it's going to be, uh, once all this work is done, it's going to help uh, increase the ounces in the ground. Uh, your metallurgy is going to increase the ounces in the ground. Um, your testing of the tailings is going to increase the ounces in the ground. Yep. Uh, there's nothing but blue sky here in this project. Yep. Absolutely, I, we should call ourselves Blue Sky Resources. But uh, listen, um, the, you're 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 right. I think the well, part part of the value proposition is this: this we're 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 building ounces. 
we're we're showing that this project has you know uh, flexibility alternatives uh, not only underground opera operations but open pit not only the potential to access toll milling along the highway but building your own standalone mill so this is all about optionality and very positive and frequent use flow for the coming months uh so listen i i think we've set ourselves up for you know a, a, a lot of incremental and and a lot of value-added work here uh and if in the rising gold price environment you know i i think you know there's there's a lot to be gained from looking at cards here from an investment perspective. And I do hope you'll your your audience will do their homework. And and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. Yeah, no, most definitely with uh, you know, increasing uh, meteorology, the 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 drill program and everything, as I say, it's uh there's gonna be news flow. The current drill program, I believe you said was uh, about a tenth complete. Yep. Um, how long before the drill stops turning on that program and how much longer is there going to be uh, drill results coming in? So the program runs with two machines nonstop 24-7 for an 18-month eight, eight, period. So it started in August of 2025 and is uh, set to terminate in East, around Easter 2027. We're fully funded to do that. We've got $12 million in the bank. And uh, yeah, that's about it. You know, they, 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 there'll be diamond drill results, like I say, regular diamond drill results uh, and, until we, we stop drilling. We, we do tend to take a break over the Christmas period. But other than that, you know, the machines, uh, they, they, just, they, they just never stop. Yeah, it's a good part of the world. You can uh, drill year round in that location. So that that's fantastic. Yep. Um, lots of news flow coming. If people want to continue to follow this story for the how do they do so? Well, uh, they could call me on, on my cell phone, 819-856-0512. Uh, they could also email me at any time, uh, philippe.cloutier at uh, resources uh, dot com. It's all spelled uh, the French way because I'm French Canadian. Or they could go to the website where they have my contact. And by the way, I, I believe next week we'll be launching a uh, an updated, brand new version of our website. So you'll be able to go there and click and uh, send me any any questions that you may have, and I will I will make it a point to to answer any and all questions that are forwarded to me. Wonderful. I uh, enjoyed having you on today, and I look forward to uh, to the results as they come scaling out at us. It's uh, an exciting time to be following Cartier Resources. Thank you again for the opportunity, Michael, and uh, all the best to you and your audience. Thank you, Philippe. Cartier Resources is a paid sponsor of the Prospector News. The Prospector News Podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.